All right. Hey, folks, I want to share with you in this video how I made the ice box uh, that you see in this photo. This actually a lot of you have probably seen it on the Sir Dork Ice Challenge from Instagram. And I had been needing to make an ice box for a while. And since it was an ice challenge, I thought, well, this was the perfect opportunity to uh, get it done. So uh, if you look at this image, I mean, it's, you know, just the ice box itself. It's just full of texture. There's posters. There's water slide decals that I use. There's lots of great rusting and griming uh, going on here. It's just a really cool looking ice box. And it posed some different challenges when I built it. It's the first one that I've built. Uh, and as with anything in toy photography or building dioramas, you know, you don't know everything. You can't know everything. Uh, and the more you do it, the better you get and the, and the more techniques you have to throw into your little tool bag and, uh, you know, call upon from memory, you know. <laughs> uh, and that's what the case here. You know, I learned a lot in this uh, uh, build and let me show you how I did it. All right. <laughs> so I built this because I wanted to use Popeye with it or, you know, any Mezco figure. You could probably get away with doing some taller figures, but uh, we went with Popeye in this. And so I'm drawing out a sort of rough shape of what I want this ice box to look like. And I've looked at some different ones online and they come in really all shapes uh you know single door double door flat front uh you know sort of beveled front i, I kind of wanted this beveled uh kind of front on mine with a single door and so i'm just drawing out some uh, a rough idea of kind of how i want this and what what pieces i'm going to need to cut uh as well as um you know how tall it's going to have to be uh, to match Popeye. And so that way I don't waste any foam. And with the price of <laughs> some of this materials nowadays, uh, you don't want to waste anything. So we're just going to make sure that we kind of get some things lined out before we actually pick up foam and start cutting it. Uh, because ultimately I'm probably going to waste some anyway. <laughs> I always do. But, but uh, this is an important first step it just gives me some measurements and stuff but but uh man you know this was a, a really fun build it i learned so much doing this without a doubt man uh you know the more you build the better you get the more confident you get the the more efficient you get so here with those measurements in mind on the left that you see i'm going to take and make sort of a template uh with this other piece of uh white copy paper i'm just going to make uh one of the edges and the reason i'm doing this is because i need both uh edges to be you know both ends of the ice box uh the beveled piece there the sides to be the same so uh my thinking is i'm just going to create sort of a template that i can use to to put onto the foam to cut and this is going to help me stay uh fairly consistent with with the um the size and the cuts there's uh, you know I, i'm sure it's the case with everybody who builds with foam uh there's always with the measurements and things like that you know uh there's always a little bit of uh excess or you know a little bit that's off a little tiny bit that you have to trim and and detail out you know uh as you go uh uh, you know, for me, no matter how many measurements you make and how much you cut, there's always some little, uh, you know, very variable that you have to, to uh, you know, adjust along the way. And so, um, you know, and this is foam. It's not concrete and wood. And so you're dealing with, you know, paper backing and foam inside and textures and things like that. You have to learn how to mask and you have to learn how to hide and paint over and seal. But, you know, it's a fun process. So here, uh, like I say, we're just making this side piece and sometimes what i do is i use the lines on my blue mat there to make sure that i'm making uh, straight lines with the ruler and that's what i'm doing here i'm just lining that ruler up on the edges so you can see there's a grid on that blue mat and so it's pretty helpful and here we're gonna look at that i got an end piece and uh, i think it's going to match popeye pretty decently When you look at these and you scale them uh, on, or you're trying to scale them, you, I look at them uh, 
on Google and I, you know, use keywords like man standing next to icebox, <laughs> real technical terms, right? And and I'm trying to see where these iceboxes kind of fall, you know, uh, as far as how tall they are with a man standing next to him where they might come up like to his waist or if he's going to reach into the door and grab ice about how tall the door needs to be. I try to be kind of uh, not... I don't want to say accurate, but it needs to be somewhat accurate. Uh, and when you're trying to build stuff for using different size figures, you kind of want to, you know, I try to kind of fall right in the middle somewhere. Uh, I don't want to build something just for one figure. And then, you know, I can only ever use that one figure. Uh, fortunately, the Popeye, you know, he's Mezco and he's 112, so I can use it for quite a few different figures. But anyway, uh, so now that we've got a template, you know, we're cutting, I've begun to cut some foam and you can see my, my template up there with the blue tape on it. I just covered it up. <laughs> we got all the pieces cut that we need for the sides and the bottom. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start gluing these rascals together with my Gorilla Glue sticks. Um, and I went with the Gorilla Glue hot glue on this because it's going to be fast and it's going to be strong. And that's what I need. Um, there's going to be some uh, moisture and different things that we're going to need to put on these uh pieces of foam and I want to make sure that if I if I use tacky glue uh, it would come apart and it would warp so uh, we need to use the pretty pretty durable uh, glue on this so now that we've got the sides of the back and the bottom put on I'm measuring this front piece uh, the you know and one of the things about this front piece is I wanted to find a way to do it all in one piece um, as I said before, it's a learning process. And so now that I built this box, the next time I build something like this, I know how I can get the front done in one piece. And, and the benefit of that is you have a smooth front piece that um, you don't have to fill in gaps later to make it look smooth. It's just one smooth, solid piece. And and, uh, and so anyway, I have an idea how to do that next time. But but uh, that's what we're doing here. I'm just getting a measurement from top to bottom uh, and writing that down. And we're going to break that front up into uh, one, two pieces, a bottom portion. You can see like on my sketch there, there's going to be a bottom portion and a top portion uh, of the front and they're going to meet and create a crease that later I'm gonna fill in. But for now, we're gonna get this cut and uh, start getting it together. And, and sometimes, you know, you're putting something together and you're like, oh, this looks like garbage. And it's easy to psych yourself out and think you're not making any progress. This looks like crap, but just keep going, man. I, I battle with the same things, you know. Uh, but at the end of the day, all we're after here is a box that sits flat. <laughs> At the end of the day, that's all I'm trying to make right here is a box that sits flat and has a certain shape to it. That's all this is, man. Uh, so don't beat yourself up. And I try to tell myself that too. But uh, we're, we're coming out pretty good here. Uh, you know, we're making... Uh, this ice box from this white foam board and this is the white foam board I bought at Michael's It's not one that is from the dollar store because I I wanted to keep the paper on this and I needed one that was a good quality so I did buy the white foam board and it was probably They they stroked me on it pretty good, uh, you know for a piece of foam with paper on it Michael's is about six bucks a board. <laughs> God. Anyway, I won't get into that, but that's why you don't want to really waste this. And I keep all my scrap pieces. Uh, so here is what I always do. And I'm trying to, if you look what I did, I, I measured for the foam on the outside of the frame, but that added a thickness and a bulk to the machine that I didn't want. So now I slide it to the inside and I recut the piece. Speaking of waste, <laughs> uh, but it's a good thing I caught this. I just didn't like the way it looked sitting outside and I should have measured inside to inside, which I ended up doing and fixing and cutting and gluing and it is now dry and here's where we're going to clean up a little bit of the uh the excess uh the little you know pieces of foam that might uh stick out a little bit here or there uh we just want this to be a square uh 
piece, and I don't mean square in shape, but I mean I want it to be square and flush. I want the edges to all be flush and I want it to sit flat. So um, instead of sanding, uh, I get out my old Dremel with a sanding drum attachment on it and I just start really lightly going over the edges until everything is really as flush as I think I, I can make it with the Dremel. And you know, and, and I do this every time, but it's just because I'm too lazy to go outside. And sometimes I'm building this stuff and it's like three in the morning and I can't really go outside because it's too cold. Uh, but this creates a bit of dust. So keep in mind that if you're gonna be doing sanding and you're inside a studio that you also do photography and 3D printing and other stuff in, uh, you might wanna cover stuff up or put a mask on or just do this outside if you want. But like I say, I build a lot of times on my days off and it's two or three in the morning and uh, I don't have the option to go outside. So anyway, um, we're gonna blow all that off. We got it nice and flush and uh, everything's looking nice and square and tight and a little knocking some edges down here with a fine grit sandpaper man. And, uh, and I'm pretty happy with the way this is coming out. But what it does do is the front lower part and the front upper part when they meet it creates a little bit of a gap so i decided to fill that gap in with a little bit of this wood glue um, i had tacky glue i had wood glue i had hot glue i had sheetrock mud uh there's a lot of options that you can use to fill this kinds of gaps in um, but i chose in the end here to use a wood glue because it dried fast it dries hard and you can sand it and that's uh, what i needed right here i needed something that dried fast and that i could sand and uh so i just fill it in there and then i kind of squeegee off the excess um and once that dries i get out the black uh mod podge here that i have now the reason that i want to use black mod podge on here um well it's not important the color uh firstly um it's just it's just what i have but the reason i want to go over this with mod podge is because i'm going to spray paint this flat white and spray paint and foam uh, don't mix very well um, it will eat the foam away and so anytime i put any textures or anything over the paper it's going to buckle uh if i add water or any type of moisture paint or anything to it so i need to seal that paper and that foam and that's what the mod podge does here um, it it seals it all up and uh, we're good to go and we can paint this now without worrying about the paper separating from the foam or uh, the foam being eaten away from the spray paint and so uh, it doesn't really matter the color Mod Podge you have I use black because it's just what I use uh, and now that we've got the door on and the uh, first of the painful painfully uh, <laughs> uh, process of water slide decals. The main thing about these water slide decals, and if these are something that you think you want to use, I'll link all these items in my description of the video, but, but um, water slide decals are necessary on something like this, which is another reason why uh, I, sp I spray paint this, because like I said, if any of that water gets on that foam paper, it's just going to start separating. So uh, this spray paint here, the Mod Podge and then the spray paint over the top really just seals that foam up, so it's not an issue. Water slide decals are their own beast. Uh, I created this ice vertical logo from the logo in the front in Photoshop. There was no vertical ice logo that I could find, so I just made one in Photoshop. Um, the trick to the water slide decals now is first, you know, you inkjet print them, then you spray a waterproof uh you know water resistant um spray over the top a matte waterproof spray you let that dry you cut them out then you soak these in water uh each paper has its own time limit but you know it said to, uh it said i think 60 seconds on here but actually it ends up being more like two to three minutes uh so i wet the surface down uh of the 
side of the ice machine here because I need these to slide around and I need them these you know I print extra because I am going to mess these up uh, they're really delicate and they're you know you really got one shot to put these on right uh, if not you just peel it off and start again uh, because they can really be a beast um, so anyway you put this paper in the water and it kind of curls up so you saw me in the beginning press it down uh, and anyway you slide it off onto the box and it's just a bit of a beast but uh, once you learn the process it's okay but you're gonna waste a few so <laughs> but there's no other way I couldn't airbrush this on here I couldn't draw it on here it really needed to be water slide decals and so uh, just you know be patient and uh, you know you can uh, create some really cool stuff with water slide decals. So here I'm using what's called a uh, AK terrain uh, streaking grime, and I'm just griming up this box a little bit uh, to make it look like it's old and kind of mildewy and grimy. It's been sitting at this gas station outside in the hot desert sun for ages, and uh, and that's exactly you know what this stuff does. Um, keep in mind when you. I'll link this in the description below also, but uh, when you use this, you'll also need to to buy a spirit thinner to um, to get the streaking uh, fading uh, effect that it produces. Um, but this is the fun part, rusting, griming, texturing, and it also helps hide, you know, little imperfections in the icebox itself. You know, it fills in little cracks and imperfections and stuff. But look at this image, man. I'm happy with it. I 3D printed a door handle. I put some little bit of tagging and posters on there. Uh, I 3D printed a frame for the top and that's actual wire screen from my backyard that I put on there. Here's an alternate image. <laughs> Popeye spinning the Corona. Hey folks, like and subscribe. I appreciate you watching the video. Follow me on all the social media platforms.